What you see here are the insides of an HP Vectra VL600, a Pentium 3 based PC made somewhere around late 1999, early 2000. And that particular block of metal there is the processor, which is an Intel Pentium 3 for slot 1, which was pretty much the same construction that was used on the earlier Pentium 2 chips. They also used this slot 1 design. They later switched to socket 370, which were just, you know, regular socket CPUs, just like they used to do with socket 7 and whatnot, and what we have today. But this is just a whole different design. AMD also used this design, but it was called slot A, and it's not electrically compatible. You could put AMD CPUs in socket 7, though, as well as the Intel CPUs. So you could use a K62 instead of, for instance, a Celeron or a Pentium Pro. But there's no real reason to do that because the K6 and the K62 and even the K63 were all really sucky chips. Up until the K7 architecture, AMD was really, you know, not quite there in terms of technology. But that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is that I'm actually going to upgrade this CPU. Because this one here, I'll pull it out for you. That's what she said. Let's see if I can get that text there. Uh, oh, it's on the other side, is it? No, it is right there, but it's not in the light very well. I don't know if it will focus on that text over there. But it says 733-256-133-165 volts, which means that this is, this is a Pentium 3 733EB. EB revision means that this thing has a copper mine Pentium 3 core, that's what the E stands for, I believe. Yeah, I get confused sometimes. But at least EB means that this is a copper mine Pentium 3, with the, so it's a Pentium 3 with the copper mine core, and it has a bus speed of 133 MHz. This motherboard, for some reason, is only compatible with EB models. So. So let's get this old CPU out of the way and get the new one in. Here in the dark, I'll bring it out in the light so you can see a little bit better. This is it. As you can see there, that is in fact a socket 370. This is a socket 370 CPU, so I can even upgrade this thing even further as long as I stick to copper mine cores, which means I can upgrade this thing to a maximum of 1133 megahertz, which is sort of interesting. This is a 1 gigahertz chip. 1000 megahertz EB CPU for a socket 370 with a slot kit converter which means I can convert the socket 370 CPU to, to slot 1 so I can fit it in this motherboard. Of course these 1 gigahertz chips run a little bit more a little bit hotter than the regular slot 1 chip and uh, it has a lot of less of cooling surface as you can see here. This is just a tiny little heat sink with a tiny little fan. So you're gonna need that fan. This thing runs warm, I can tell you that. Even though this thing has fresh thermal paste and whatnot and the fan works fine. This motherboard has a little bit of an issue because um, the fan headers are, well, broken, it seems. So that's kind of a shame. But I've bought some adapters to get everything working. Yes, everything in this CPU, or well, in this PC, I must say, is sort of adapted. You know, sometimes you have to find workarounds. Or <laughs> Pentium 3 motherboards for slot 1 aren't, aren't exactly bountiful in these areas. So, this is what I bought. This is a Molex to 3 pin fan connector adapter. I actually bought two of them so I can also use one for the case fan if I wanted to. But this case fan appears to be dead as well. This is the fan itself. And this one, in this case, is not the fan, but it's the fan header. So, I'll just uh, use one of these, hook it up to the power supply like so, and then connect the fan and uh, pin up in there. And then it works, in theory. So we'll find out how well this thing works, actually. This thing used to be quite, uh, you know, quite a speedy little machine for a Pentium 3. So let's see how this thing will run once I upgrade it to this 1 gigahertz chip. Trust me on this, installing Pentium 3s in the slot 1 computers is not fun. You need to be lucky. Okay, now I push down. 
It's a little bit wonky, but I guess uh, I won't ever get a complete fit. We'll loop that cable around so we don't get that stuck in there. Okay, so now we need to connect the fan header to the power supply. So first of all, we're gonna need to install the adapter. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. Let's see, this is gonna be interesting. First ever attempt to do this one-handed. I even did it off camera. <laughs> Excellent. That's a nice snug fit, I say. Okay, we're ready to rumble, people. Yeah. Let's see, we need it connected in this orientation. This uh, video is taking longer because I'm doing everything one-handed and I refuse to put down a camera to do anything. So, we're just loop the cable back so. Yeah, one thing I do want to change here on the fly as well is the video card. Because currently I have Windows XP RTM edition, so it's, it's, it's XP Professional, it's the RTM, so no service packs running on this thing. And for some reason it totally hates um, this Riva TNT2 NVIDIA card. Don't know why, but when it boots it's like terribly slow and it takes like a lot longer than it should. So I'm gonna swap this one out. It's not really the card itself, but it's just a software problem and it's annoying. So I'll just pop in this baby right here. The good old FX 5200. That's like, that, that seems to be the backup card that pretty much every AGP user still has laying around. It's either a 5200 or a 6200, it seems. And my, yeah, yeah, that's a little bit of a problem. You know, the bracket is bent, so it will barely fit. This case is really, really tight. I'm gonna have to put down a camera, guys. I'm sorry. I'm actually not gonna need that screw at all. Very interesting. Case closed. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I obviously can't lift this thing with one hand. This thing weighs close to 20 kilograms, and I can't do that with one hand. So, I'll hook it up and let's get started. Okay then. When I flipped the switch on the power supply, it turned on right away. So, without further ado, let's just flip the power supply switch and see what the hell happens. Eh, it sounds pretty okay. That doesn't sound so good. Something hitting the fan probably. We'll just let it run for now. It says Intel Pentium 3 1000 EB as you can read there. 256 megs of RAM. Yay. This thing still suffers from that little issue I have with the IDE controller. Which means that it takes uh, a while for them to initialize. This could indicate that there is a hardware problem with one of my IDE devices. I haven't troubleshooted it. I haven't had time for that. I decided to make this video nevertheless. We'll just let it run for a while. I just wiggle it in there. That's a bit better. Okay, we've got an error. Okay. Let's view that. 
Oh, the error code is actually in German. Error code 0031. The processor marker code could not be found in the system BIOS. Your BIOS version is most probably aged and uh, it does not contain the microcode for your processor. Please load the most recent BIOS version from the HP website on this and this address. Yada yada yada. You could use your computer just fine without the correct microcode, but your PC could behave unexpectedly. This <laughs> and that's why this is not really recommended. That's just in a, you know, a little bit of a translation from German. I know it's not fully correct, so, but that's just, you know, what the, the, the uh, whatever. Let's just boot this damn thing. I don't feel like explaining stuff. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's just boot. Let's see what happens. Question being, will it boot? Yes, it will. Good. Apologies for the blurriness. Nothing I can do about it. We even have sound. And a horrible grinding noise coming from the case. <laughs> I'll fix that. There is no driver for the FX5200 in the RTM version of XP. Which doesn't surprise me. We'll just force it in software for now. There we go, XP Professional 2002, no service packs, 256 megs of RAM, 999 megahertz. Well, yay! Device manager, the only thing it doesn't understand is our VGA controller. And for the love of God, PC, stop making that noise. Whoops. There is something vibrating in a case and that's making that noise. That's a shame. But yeah, we'll fix that. So yeah, it's running XP now. And it's actually fine. I wanted to run, uh, you know, 98 on this primarily, but eh, never mind. This is what CPU Z says. Pentium 3EB, copper mine. Socket 370, it even says, <laughs> even though it's in a slot one. Core voltage is not reported, 256k a cache, 1000 megahertz. Yes, yes, yes. This is AGP. It says AGP version 3.0, this thing is AGP 2.04x. My nice RAM bus or DRAM. I hate that stuff. And the graphics device, it detects it as an NVIDIA MV34, which is an FX5200, 128M bytes of RAM. Excellent! So the CPU grid was successful. And that's awesome. I do need to fix that horrible grinding noise. But other than that, the system works fine. I might just need to, uh, you know, attach something to it. Just there is some vibrance in the case and it's making the thing rattle a little bit. I don't really see why that's a problem. I'll can, I can fix that, so. Okay, this is gonna be the conclusion of the video. Hope you enjoyed this video and I thank you all for watching.